Hi, I'm Dr. Delana Reed and the instructor for the course in Qualitative Research Methods and Communication. Uh, I have with me here today Dr. Karen Keith. Now, Dr. Keith is uh, assistant professor in the Department of C Curriculum and Instruction over in the College of Education. And I happen to know from working with her that she has a uh, specializes in action research. In fact, she developed a course, an online course there in that department. So I thought, who better to ask? about action research for you than Dr. Keith. She's also the program coordinator for the graduate uh, masters in, in reading. And, and in fact, I picked up a little tidbit online that you are also on the faculty senate. You're on the yes. executive committee. Yes. Not busy at all, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate you taking the time to come and do this little interview, and we'll try to keep it brief and to the point. Okay. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Okay. I think the easiest place to start is just with an overall question, which is uh, to just define action research for me and to describe the process. Okay. Uh, before I even begin with the definition of action research, I first uh, want to talk to you about where I start with my students. Um, when my students begin the action research course, one of the first things that I have to combat is their understanding of what is uh, what is research. So their conception of research in the very beginning is that it's it's a very positivist view. Uh, they see research as something that is done to them. Uh, that. A, Perhaps a university professor comes in to do the uh, action re to do the research, not the action research. And um, so, when the university professor comes in, they have an experimental and a control group, and. Um, so they're not involved in developing the research question or defining the research problem. It is uh, simply research that is done uh, in their setting by someone else. So my first goal is to get students to construct a different conception of research. Then uh, I help them understand that action research is really an inquiry conducted by an individual uh, in a research context that is personal to them and with the participants who are in that research context. Um, so really it's a method to modify or change um, and improve one's uh, practice, uh, whatever that practice might be. And um, so the, while the researcher is the one doing the research, the problem is often generated with the participants in that research setting. So then when it comes to participatory action research, which is a more narrow or more specific kind of action research. How does that change it? What does that mean for it to be participatory? Uh, with participatory research, action research, I immediately think of uh, Paulo Freire and his work in uh, with Brazilian workers mm -hmm. uh, who were illiterate. And Freire really involved those participants in uh, the research process. So in working with those uh, Brazilian workers, they engaged in what he called a process of conscientization. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was this great dialogue uh, that went on between him and the, the workers, the Brazilian workers. And uh, they identified the questions and, and really um, worked to find the root of their um, illiteracy and their and their poverty. So he worked with them to um, to define that and to bring about a critical awareness of where they were and why they were there. Mm -hmm. So when I think of participatory research, I I'll always go back to uh, Freire's book. Uh, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Mm -hmm. It was one of the most influential books I've read um, about participatory re research, mm -hmm. action research. Mm -hmm. So oh, what I'm hearing is that there are two ways of looking at this, but very similar. It's just how far into, say, ju social justice 
or social action do you yes. want to go? Yes. If you are <clears throat> a teacher who wanted to improve her uh, curriculum in the classroom or wanted to test a particular, let's just say, from my perspective, storytelling. So how do you, how storytelling might uh, teach social studies? And if that were effective in the classroom, she could use action research in her own classroom. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Uh, but I uh, also, let's say I wanted to go work with, say, uh, uh, well, I, I can't come up with anything off the top of my head, but a particular group of people who are uh, fighting for their rights. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it is, in fact, such as what's going on in uh, California at the university, and forgive me, I can't remember which one. I'm not going to go, but I am a member of American Folklore Society, and there's a big issue. I'm getting in my emails there about the, uh, the hotel there actually not the university but the hotel where it's going to be held the workers are uh, demonstrating or were demonstrating and they're trying to get the hotel management to allow them to unionize mm -hmm. and so uh, maybe that would be a cause i'm really involved in and as a scholar i could be of help with them right yes yeah. so you would engage in that process of action research with mm -hmm. that that group of individuals and uh and you know, depending on what your question would be, you would go in and interview the participants. Um, so, first of all, define what the problem is with the individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, then once you define what the problem is with the individuals, uh, you develop a question, and then you gather information, uh, what's going on in the situation, and um, just try to find out, uh, gather research, uh, literature, uh, and then gather your own data, and then come up with some conclusions and findings and results after your analysis. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen wonderful diagrams that show action research, the process, in a spiral. Yes. Can you explain why that is or what they're trying to yes. show there? So the best way for me to explain why action research is, is a spiral is because it does begin with a question. Then uh, again, you go into the process of uh, gathering research and literature and trying to see what other people are saying about that problem and your question. Then you gather your own data and you analyze that data and th then you make changes uh, to your practice or your process. And then after you make those changes, you gather more data uh, to find out did that process or that change make an impact on your situation. And if it did, then you continue uh, and you actually end up developing more questions. Once you develop more questions, you engage in that process all over again. Uh, again, looking at the research and what, uh, what other people have said about that problem, and then gathering more data. So it's, it's very much um, a cyclical process. Do you have a research project you could bring up as an example of that? Yes. Um, one teacher that I worked with, uh, she was engaging in sustained silent reading in her uh, classroom. When she engaged in that sustained silent reading, she noticed that her students were not, um, were not engaged in reading. They were not uh, participating, and so she wanted to find out what's going on. So uh, again, she involved her, the participants, the students in her classroom, and she asked them, why are you not participating in sustained silent reading? This is uh, something that the school has said that we need to do. Uh, I need to do it in my classroom. So, and, and I know that sustained silent reading helps students with their reading. So um, what can I do as a teacher to get you more engaged in this process? So she surveyed the students. When she surveyed the students, um, she found out that one of the things that she needed were more books of interest to the students um, and that they told her that. So she then brought in some materials uh, from the library and had the students go in and actually pick out books of interest to them. Uh, they wanted to read magazines, they wanted to read uh, books about sports, um, books about um, 
just topics of interest to them. And so she decided to stock her library with books that they identified uh, as of interest to them. So she did that. And then she, again, engaged in the process of observation and tried to see if students were more engaged in the reading process uh, once she added more books into her classroom. Good example. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, um, speak uh, clearly a classroom teacher or who is also a scholar has you know interests in that area um, can can use this in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some other disciplines do you think that would benefit from the action research process? Other disciplines, uh, many other disciplines engage in action research. Uh, I've read about it. Uh, nursing, uh, the field of nursing, uh, social work. So really it's it's open uh, and anyone who wants to make changes to their practice and engage with the participants in the research setting uh, can do action research. Okay, good, good. I have read a couple of places where some might say that this is not really a methodology, a research methodology. What do you think about that? I, I disagree. Um, I do think that re action research is a methodology. Um, I think it depends on your definition of research. If your definition of research is that it is done, uh, something that is done by an outside person uh, to another person, and that the participants should not be involved in that, um, in those findings, then you would probably say that action research was not uh, a bona fide methodology. But um, in my view, action research is um, the perfect method methodology because you really want, if you want to engage in change and if you want something to change, then you can't you can't impose your views on other people. They have to come up with their own cogni cogni cognition that there's something going on here that is wrong and we need to make a change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I was wondering um, if you had any recommendations for students in, in the qualitative methods class on how to approach action research, what would you recommend they be sure to do if they chose to do this as their methodology? The one thing I tell my students at the beginning uh, when they are st starting to try to find their problem or the question that they're going to answer is to think about uh, what is itching you. Uh, and I know that sounds a little strange, <laughs> but uh, I ask them, you know, what are the problems that you are encountering? What are you frustrated about in your own classroom setting? Uh, and it doesn't have to be a classroom setting. It could be uh, any setting. If you were a nurse, what is it that is bothering you uh, in the health uh, field where you are? And that's where you begin to uh, uncover the problem that you can uh, engage in research and try to find a solution to that problem. Mm -hmm. When I have worked with several students, actually, in uh, storytelling, who were teachers, who wanted to use the action research process, and and so I'm 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 new to that. I've guided them, I think, fairly well, but always it gets down to the analysis. How can you make sure? Uh, what would what would you? How would you approach your analysis to be sure that you have data and clearly? Uh, draw out of that data what you need to know. The one thing I tell my students about the analysis process is that you're looking for patterns. So for example, if you do uh, interviews as part of your data collection and you interview teachers and you ask the same questions, um, one of the questions that in a research study that I did, I asked teachers about um, what was their definition of inquiry. And so the teachers would uh, say, well, inquiry is really a process of asking questions. And um, so I would say 90% of the teachers that I interviewed said 
that it was a process of asking questions or they mentioned questions. So, uh, so when I write about that and when I do my analysis, one of the things that I, I see, it's a pattern. Teachers overwhelmingly say it's about questions, it's about questions, it's about questions. Good, thank you, I appreciate that. Well, I've, I've asked everything I wanted to ask. Before we close, is there anything you would like to add? The only thing I would like to add is that um, concerning um, the generalizability, that there is a difference in action research, and that is that the findings that you generate in your research setting, they are not generalizable to the general public. Now that does not mean that these findings are not important um, or that they wouldn't inform the general public. Uh, it just means that you can't general, generalize those findings to a broader, uh, broader population. So for example, if you're studying a second grade classroom, uh, your findings are specific only to that second grade classroom because that second grade classroom is unique and different to any other second grade classroom that might be out in the United States. And so um, you, you really can't generalize your, your findings to other second grade classrooms. All right. I appreciate you pointing that out. That's true of most qualitative research. And that's one of the things, that, like you said, your students come in, to the class with this scientific experimental model in their mind. That's all they've ever, really ever seen. And so it's hard to get them to realize you don't have to generalize. This is not what you're trying to do with this right. methodology. Right. You're well, simply trying to find an answer to a problem that uh, is personal to you. Mm -hmm. And can be very helpful to others when they read your research. Right. Hopefully you publish it and mm -hmm. they can get uh, glean something from that and apply it to their own situation that's right. similar. Well, uh, Dr. Keith, I want to thank you for your time. It's, it's been great to get to talk to you and, and find out more about this uh, from your perspective. I've learned something. I appreciate you sharing that with us. You're welcome. And thank you all for being here. Sure.